Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Welcome, everyone, on TikTok. Welcome, everyone, on Facebook. Uh, Sunday is the day we do the multi-stream here. Uh, We may do more multi-streams in the future. Uh, It seems to work well, Um, but this is also available on the podcast the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. If you don't know me, my name is Jacob Cooker, but my friends call me Cub, and you can call me Cub too. You should call me Cub. Uh, so today, what we do on Sundays, if you don't know uh, around here, is we just kind of sit back uh, and we have an esoteric reading of the gospel. Uh, so welcome, Maureen. Welcome, Aisha. Ronald, thank you for being here. Merle Cantrell, what is up, my friend? How are you doing? Uh, we're also live in the free podcast discretion discussion group on Facebook, uh, as well as the mythos group that we have now the mythos group. If you don't know about it, it's like a support membership for what I do here with that. There's a lot of extra stuff that you get, including video trainings, uh, a lot of, uh, more of the deeper practice of my teachings. And then just like an all access, uh, Facebook group there that we all get to, uh, interact in and have, uh, deeper conversations really do the work together. Um, and then there's some other really cool perks with that too. You can find out about that over on my website, cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. That's where all this stuff is. If you're looking for spiritual resources, any of the books I talk about, the membership that we have, um, as well as the free Facebook group and the links to the podcast and all my socials, that's where you can find it. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to share some stuff from the Gospel of John today that is is probably mind-blowing for a lot of us. Um, if you don't know me, I am a mystic, a light worker, a mentor. Um, I teach and explore faith, spirituality, and the realm of the paranormal as well as mythologies. Um, and I look at our entire operating system as humanity, specifically the personal self operating system uh, as a mythos Um, and I look at your mythos and my mythos uh, with the acronym being your mind yielding the hope of spirit and so that is my goal is to help you help your mind yield the hope of spirit and that's a very simplistic way of looking at what I'm doing Um, but it's also a very poignant way is Um, our mind is not just our brain. It is like the mind, you know, it is so much more than that. It is this, uh, very, very massive fractal reality that we live in connecting to the mind of God. Um, and that's, that's really what I teach. So with that said, um, I was raised, uh, within a Christian household. Um, I consider myself a Christ follower, um, not necessarily on the side of, um, that I would consider myself a Christian on paper, if that makes sense. Uh, and the reason that that is, is because I've got a lot of issue with old Testament and new Testament theology that seems to refute what Jesus actually said, um, and then try to make sense of it in weird ways. It just doesn't, uh, it doesn't make sense. So, that's kind of where I where I come at it um, from. So, um, let's see. Craig says it sounds like you gain infamy from others, so you want to become enlightened from stealing knowledge uh, to progress in life. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, Craig. Um, and if you don't know me, then um, you, you're welcome to think whatever you want. Um, but stick around and we've got some really good stuff today. So, uh, it's nice to be in your live video. What is up wisdom? Welcome. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you guys for the gifts. Uh, the father in heaven says, God bless. Hoping you have a great rest of your week. Good morning, brother. Eddie says, thank you for being here, Eddie. And by the way, if you guys have questions, comments, uh, relevant to the study today, drop them in the comments and, uh, just know that I value inclusion of all races, religions, and orientations. I strive to give love infinitely, and I teach self-awareness through thoughts, emotions, energies, and actions. Um, and that's how we're going to approach it today. And I love the Bible, guys. 
Um, but some of the stuff I'm going to share today is not your traditional doctrinal theology. So just go into it knowing that. I have an open mind, and I think we're going to find some really cool stuff today. So one of the things about John, the Gospel of John, it's written a bit different than the other Gospels. Uh, one of the things is John chapter 21 is widely accepted by scholars as being added later. That's where you get a lot of the things um, of like the post-resurrection, um, you know, appearances and stuff like that. So uh, we're not going to get into that today. But when we get to John chapter 21, we're going to read it in that light and understand that it was most likely added later on. Uh, to try and tie things up with like the other Gospels and just make sure that there was a consistent story. That is not uncommon, by the way. This is not conspiratorial, anything like that. If you didn't know that and that's shocking, that's fine because I was there too. Like literally two years ago, I believed that the Bible was completely infallible and every word in it was absolutely true. And now I'm on a much different level of reading it as an esoteric document on like the human journey, the journey of the soul. What does it really mean in that light? Um, and kind of everyone, you know, throughout the canonization process is trying to justify or fit stuff together. Maybe there was some systems of control put in place by different um, institutions. Again, I'm not here to, to try to be conspiratorial with that, but rather just look at it for what it is, which is there's some incredible stuff in there. But if we try to read the message of Jesus and try to justify it against the God of the Old Testament or try to justify it against like, you know, all of the Pauline doctrine, I think we run into some issues. Now, there are some people that are contemporaries of mine and friends of mine that do a really good job and have a better understanding of Pauline doctrine than I do. I still don't see it, though. That, so I don't get into that. That's why we're reading the Gospels. I read the Gnostic Gospels. I'm going to read from the Bhagavad Gita today. Uh, which is absolutely incredible. I've got a great quote out of here I'm going to read. But you guys are going to see how this all ties together, and it, it really is mind-blowing here. So, um, Let's see. Uh, Chakra Flower Art says, Hey, I've been confused. Angel numbers have helped me to do better, and I feel that they are divine guidance, but I'm learning it may be wrong, in, and I'm so confused it helped me quit sins. Uh, Chakra Flower Art, I totally understand, especially coming from a place of like, um, all of the stuff I'm studying right now, all of the stuff I'm practicing, all of the stuff I teach is considered heretical at some point in time. Uh, it's considered, you know, oh, don't go there. That's magic. That's esotericism. That's uh, new age. That's whatever. Here's the deal. Like, I let spirit guide me. And if I am well with it and it's bearing good fruit, then I continue on that path. I don't believe in being deceived when there is good fruit, when I'm connected to the vine, when I have life and love uh, and enlightenment and peace in my heart. I don't believe that that's deception because when I was in the systems of all of this, uh, following the letter of the law or the Bible, as we call it now, um, I was really struggling personally and I wasn't looking into any kind of mystic or esoteric interpretation. I was just trying to understand the logical interpretation, the literal interpretation, and it caused so much pain in my life, so much self-loathing, so many sin patterns, so many addictions. And I'm not here to talk against anyone that is on that path, just tell you that there is another way, and it's okay to look, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open, ask and you shall receive. I focus on the words of Christ, and I don't think I can go wrong with that. Um, I believe he was not only an ascended master, a, a guru, a yogi, whatever you want to call it, but I believe he was the fullness of God. I believe he was the fullness of the logos of God. And if you look into Gnosticism, the divine mother and the divine father, the divine feminine, the divine masculine um, come together. And that process of coming together bears the word of God or the logos uh, which is present both in light frequencies and sound vibrations, uh, which basically is everything holding you together right now. So he is in and through all things. Nothing was created uh, without him. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful esoteric understanding if you let yourself go there. And that's the biggest thing for a lot of us is like, 
can we just let ourselves go there? Can we quit trying to defend something that we didn't write or create um, and maybe adopt something that actually serves us on a level where we actually love others and we want to go out and make the world a better place? That's the whole point, right? Not to try to believe the right thing and then hope that everything works out when we're gone from this life, but maybe, just maybe, we can manifest the very kingdom of God right now. Uh, because Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. We're going to see that later in the text. But I just wanted to give you guys some context for starting here. That's what I'm all about. Um, I want to help, and it's okay. I need help. We all need help. Um, and it's okay to find that help. Like um, That help may not come in the package that you thought it was supposed to come in. And I know that for a fact because I've experienced that. The help that I've found in this was in the very things that I was raised with the understanding that you don't mess with those. Like, don't, that's weird. That's, you know, Satanism. That's New Age. That's uh, a cult. That's whatever, you know. Uh, and then I start to look at, like, the real side of that, where you actually have these, like, animal sacrifices and all of this stuff in the Old Testament. And then now we're trying to justify that with, like, Jesus just being the ultimate sacrifice and everything. And of course, I believe he was martyred. Um, but I definitely believe more in the Gnostic Gospels like Mary Magdalene, uh, the fabric of reality, the fractal mind of God, uh, wisdom, those types of things. So, And then the Gnosis, the true Gnosis is like when you wake up and you realize that you're a part of God. Like you knew that when you were a kid. Nobody had to tell you, you know, before you knew pain or poverty or any type of suffering or failure, you knew God. You were, you were in oneness with God. You must become like a child again. And, uh, when Christ said that, like, we just think that, oh, we just have to receive the message. Like, you know, like in awe, like a little child. Well, that's partly true, but it's more about like in the Gnostic gospels, it says, uh, a wise man does not, uh, hesitate to ask a seven day old child where the place of life is for that child knows it well. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's from uh, the Gnostic gospel of Thomas. And so basically like, when you know, you know, like you're connected, you're tapped in, you're part of source. And that's what I teach here, guys. So I'm not trying to be biblically accurate. I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, religiously lawful in any type of sense like that. I am, by all intents and purposes, a heretical, new age, mystic, Christian uh, guy that wants to help people ascend. Like, I believe in the divine creative. I believe we are all creative. There's no left brain and right brain. Yes, you have tendencies towards one or the other, but uniting both of them uh, is where you end up with with some amazing things and that creative force that's within all of us. So Matt Green says, love it. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Robert, for being here. Um, let's see. So when we talk about Gnosticism and why people call uh, it New Age Satanism, uh, if that's not true, what's the enemy? The last thing I promise. No, no, no. You're, you're, you ask all the questions you want, Shocker Flower. Uh, love your name, by the way. So there's this whole heaven and hell, good versus evil narrative. And what I'm going to get into today, especially with this parable of the wine, this is uh, Jesus going to the wedding at Cana. This is going to be mind-blowing because this wine represents, I believe, this is my belief. This is my interpretation. You can do this too, by the way. You can have your own revelation of these stories. You can have your own deep understanding of these stories. Uh, esoteric just means looking under the surface. It means it's it's hidden knowledge. It's secret knowledge. It's not secret because it's behind lock and key. It's just those with eyes to see and ears to hear. That's literally what Christ talked about. And so what you get from most pulpits is like a nice theological representation of why Jesus turning water into wine was talking about uh, foreshadowing his sacrifice. And that's one interpretation, and I'm not refuting that that's true. I'm just saying there is another side of that coin. There's a deeper level, and that's where we're going to go today. And so that enemy that you're asking about, that enemy is has been hiding in plain sight all along, I believe, from my understanding. I do not believe that the Yahweh of the Old Testament is the divine father that Christ spoke of. Uh, this divine fractal nature of God is much different than uh, this Old Testament representation of what God is supposed to be. Who has more in common with the pantheons of mythologies than it uh, has to do with, with anything else? 
Yes, I have the dog. Um, my wife just got home. She had to run to the store. But um, And Zelda's in here. She's taking a nap, so she's getting to help me. Uh, thank you guys for the stars on Facebook, by the way. That helps me immensely grow this page. Thank you for the gifts over here on uh, TikTok as well. All of those gifts add up. You know, if I can make, you know, 50 or 100 bucks every time I go live, then this ministry is continuing. And I really appreciate that. So thank you guys for the gifts on here. Uh, those add up quickly. Um, with that said, open your mind, buckle up. We're getting into some deep stuff today. This is going to get real, real quick. So John chapter two, I'm reading in the world English Bible. Um, the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus mother was there. Jesus also was invited with his disciples to the wedding when the wine ran out. Okay. There's a key there. When the wine ran out, Jesus mother said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does that have to do with you and me? My hour has not yet come. And that's a very common place where people tie that to, obviously, the sacrifice of Christ, going to the cross, uh, the blood atonement. Um, but what we're going to see here in a minute, I think, has more ties to Old Testament uh, and the, the cup of wrath of Yahweh. And we're going to see that here in just a second. So, um, his mother said to the servants, whether, whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six water pots of stone set there after the Jews' way of purifying. So they had these ritual big, big stone jars like they would have water in and they had to go like from one to the other so that you were purified by the end of them. I think there was seven, I believe the number was important. Um, I can't remember exactly, but... Um, and they, they were holding, basically think of like 55 gallon drums of water, basically like huge, huge vats of water. Um, so he said to fill them up to the brim, he said, now draw some water and take it to the ruler of the feast. So they took it when the ruler of the feast tasted the water now became wine. Um, and he didn't know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew the ruler. Okay. There's another key. The servants who had drawn the water knew. Okay, the ruler of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And when the guests have drunk freely, then that which is worse. So basically, hey, normal party etiquette here. What are you doing? Um, you know, you serve the good stuff first. So everybody's like, oh, that tastes good. And then when everybody gets a little tipsy, you're like, yeah, here, now drink the rest of this wine that I don't want to drink. Like, you know, now drink the bad wine um, because nobody notices at that point. Um, and it's really interesting here. And again, I'm going to tie this to Genesis. Uh, again, my interpretation, my interpretation here, you can have your own. You don't have to believe me, but do the research for yourself and you start to see this like piece together one piece at a time. So, um, and then verse 11, it says, uh, this beginning, this is the beginning of his signs. Jesus did in Cana and Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed him. Um, and so I love that. Like, um, I, this is obviously a sign. How is it a sign? Um, what sign are we missing here in it? So everyone serves the good wine first when the guests have drunk freely, that which is worse comes out you have kept the good wine until now he said so like i see this as a like what are you doing type situation like you know huh, this is amazing why did you save it for now like what is going on here so um now he's going to go to capernaum and we're going to read about that because we're going to see what he does in capernaum i think actually has something to do with this uh, but I want to take you guys back to Genesis chapter three. Um, this is after Adam and Eve eat of the fruit. It says Yahweh, Yahweh God or Yahweh Elohim called to the man and said to him, where are you? The man said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? 
The man said, uh, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate it. Yahweh God said to the woman, what have you done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Yahweh God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above all livestock. And above every animal of the field, you shall go on your belly. And you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I will put hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will bruise your head, and you will bruise his heel. Now this has deeper meaning to Christ later on. And I'm not going to go into that because I haven't done enough of the research yet to speak with authority on it. But just know that... This whole bruising your head and bruising your heel ideology um, actually has a lot more to do with Jesus than we think um, from the research I've done. So with that said, um, you have this whole garden imagery. They're like in perfect paradise, okay? I call it the perfect prison. They're in this beautiful paradise. What does that sound like? Well, that sounds like giving good wine up front. That sounds like how the normal people that would hold a party would do it. Giving good wine up front and then pouring out the bad wine. So if you go through Genesis 2, actually we're in Genesis 3, excuse me, Genesis chapter 3, uh, then you see that um, to Adam he says in verse 17, because you have listened to your wife's voice, you've eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Now, here's what's interesting. You've listened to your wife's voice, okay? Yahweh hated Asher poles, which was the worship or the honoring of the god Asherah. Asherah was the wife or the consort of El, El Elyon, God Most High, that Melchizedek spoke of. Jesus was a high priest in the order of Melchizedek, okay? You guys see how this is connecting here? We have all of this theology around like, oh, the wife did it, blah, blah, blah. Like, ladies, listen up. This is important. Listen up to this. You have all of this theology that's been built around. There's already enmity between you and your husband just because you go and hear this at church. It's so ingrained in you. And it's so ingrained in everyone that this is the fall of man. This is the original sin. No, no, no. The original sin was the watchers messing up the DNA, the serpent of humanity. And what has the serpent done ever since? It's been... It's crawled on its belly. As we ascend, humanity's consciousness is raised. We enter new ages, age of Aquarius. Here we are. We're ascending. Our DNA, our genetic makeup is ascending. Okay? And that's not a scientific claim, by the way. So don't don't write me up for that. I'm not saying that. I'm talking esoterically, okay? Like your your makeup, your ability to communicate with God is ascending. You know, that serpent around the tree is the, is the DNA wrapped around the spinal cord. It's all esoteric. That's how I read things. You can read it as history if you want, but you're going to run into a lot of walls that way. So I read it on an esoteric level, and that helps me a lot. Uh, Better Woke, thank you very much. What is up? Um, I'll take some comments here in a second, guys, I promise. Um, then it says... Um, Okay, let me let me back up here. So he curses the uh he curses the serpent. Okay, here you go. To to Adam he said because you've listened to your wife's voice. That's important. That's what I was trying to go with that is the the divine feminine. The divine feminine in Asherah, the Asher pole. Then they they had built an altar of with a bull or a calf, a golden calf. Well, what is that? What is the golden bull? The golden bull is L. Represents El Elyon, God Most High. If you look in the Sumerian mythology, you're going to see that pantheon of gods, and the God of gods is El. Um, it's it's beautiful, guys, when you get into it and like you understand the deeper level of it. And so, listening to the feminine voice, okay, the divine feminine was the sin here that Yahweh Elohim, not not God of gods, not God Most High, but the Yahweh Elohim. 
Now, I try to tread lightly on this, guys, because this this can be a message that people are like, whoa, this, I got, oh, you can either go, oh, this guy's crazy, or you can read it for yourself and go, hmm, there's a lot there. Um, and I mean this in all respect to all walks of life, faith, and traditions. Like, I'm not here to shake your tradition. Keep You can keep going where you're going, keep being who you are. I just want to give you another option here. That's all I want to do. Like, why is it sinful here to listen to the wife's voice? Because you have listened to your wife's voice and eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Now the ground is cursed for your sake. You will eat from it and much labor all the days of your life. It will yield thorns and thistles to you. What ended up on he- on the Christ's head? The thorn, the, the crown of thorns. You will eat the herb of the field. He ate bitter herbs. You will eat bread by the sweat of your face and you will return to the ground. Remember Jesus broke the bread, his body. Um, for you were taken out of it from the dust you are and dust you shall return. But then we see that Jesus transcended this. He re-manifest himself to his followers some accounts of it are just a handful of especially the women some accounts are was like all the disciples i can't tell you which one happened or didn't happen but um there's deeper meaning in that too uh the man called his wife eve because she would be the mother of all the living yahweh god made garments of animal skins for adam and for his wife and clothed them so we have like the first account of unaliving here of animals, uh, making it from the skins of them, right? Like, you know, we don't have any indication of them doing anything other than uh, living in harmony with the animals, naming all of them, you know. Um, I don't know how they ate or anything, but, you know, again, Genesis chapter 1 is the divine creation, a being of light that is both male and female, perfectly in harmony. Thank you guys for the gifts. God bless you. I love it. Love it. Thank you. Um, so you end up with some really deep misunderstandings of this because you kind of have one tradition of interpreting all of this, and that is the fall of man, original sin, um, and then God's just pretty much mad for the rest of the Old Testament uh, unalives around between 2.5 and 25 million people, including children and animals and, uh, you know, not even including them, but, um, there's people that have done the math and it's, it's pretty wild. Just the amount of carnage that was in the wake of this God. Okay. So, um, I call him the alien God, the extraterrestrial God. There's so many accounts of him coming down uh, and fire and smoke, uh, balls of light, different, you know, like standing there and speaking with Moses as a man speaks to another man. And then Jesus said, no man has seen my father. Um, he is in spirit and in truth. Like Marseillon of uh, Penope believed that Jesus brought a new God. He did not believe that Yahweh was the father that Christ spoke of whatsoever. Um, he was a contemporary and a follower of Paul, um, which leads me to think that I wonder what Paul really believed because you can see, uh, Rome's fingerprints all over the documents that Paul wrote. Uh, you just have immediately, like we replaced like the old systems and the old religious law with a new one, a new, new church, a new, this is the way you have to believe this is how you have to do it. And I'm going to chastise you for this and for that rather than, you know, this is amazing that we get to connect with God. Like, that's just how I see it, guys. So that's why I like the esoteric reading of the Gospels. Because for me, there's a ton of power in it. There's a ton of power, and it gives power uh, back to us, okay? It gives power back to us, and that's important. Because when power is taken from us, and we have misunderstanding about who we are, then we're crippled and we don't even know it. Um, Greg says, at least you are willing to offer an alternative perspective on things. Truth is lost in a one-sided story. Amen, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, 
and and that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. It may not be uh, popular on the Sunday morning crowd, but uh, we do it every day of the week here. I just like to do this kind of church type thing on Sundays because I want to offer a different side of that coin, a different perspective. Again, in respect, like go to church, that's fine. I don't have any problem with that, guys. I don't because I do this full time. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, I can't think outside of the box and still listen to a pastor who does love God, but is operating out of a theological construct that they've just been, been programmed with. Andrew says, do you have a podcast? Absolutely. This is a live version of the podcast. So you can listen to this on the audio podcast on Apple, Spotify, anchor, and about 40 other platforms. It's over at cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. Just click on the podcast, uh, and that'll take you to a page with like every platform of the podcast, um, and you can go uh, listen to it wherever you like, subscribe. I would really appreciate it. So what do you think about the new climate change commandments being unveiled on Mount Sinai today? Honestly, I haven't heard about that, but I, I think all of that, you know, the whole, again, not to get conspiratorial here, I don't even like mentioning this, but God yeah, God in the Old Testament, Yahweh, especially within like the Sumerian pantheon, was was not viewed as the God of gods. He was viewed as uh, the God of storms, uh, the God of weather. And I think there's a lot to do with that today. And you see like the Abrahamic Accords and everything going on and like that uh, one world center that they unveiled. Um Like, it's all Yahwehist belief systems. And again, I'm not, like, I literally do respect you. I'm not here to tell you you're wrong. I'm just showing you another side of the coin. Um, I'm showing you that for me, my God is not the God of the Old Testament. My God is the God that Christ spoke of, the Father, the divine fractal, the spirit, the truth, the divine feminine, the divine masculine, coming together to bear the logos, the divine expression within you and me. Uh, the fullness of which was present in the person of Jesus Christ, uh, who came to fully enlighten and release humanity into a brand new understanding of who God is. And I think that we've lost that. I think we've lost that by trying to uh, justify everything and try to go with all of this. And this has to make sense with this when there really is an esoteric way to look at all of this. And I believe that Christ, so much of what he spoke, was transcendent and standalone of all of this. Yet when you look into the old mythologies of it, then you go, well, wait a minute. Maybe that's not who Jesus was talking about. So after this, uh, you have the animal garments. And then to conclude the chapter here, Yahweh God said, behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand and also take the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, Yahweh God sent him out from the Garden of Eden Till the, to till the ground for which he was taken. So he drove uh, out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword, which turned um, which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So, you know, here's the deal. why If God made this creation to be his own, why does he not want it to live with him, like to be eternal with him? Because isn't that why Jesus came? Like, why didn't he just do that in the beginning? It doesn't make sense. But it does if you read John 2, and we're in John 2 here, and you see that there's wine poured out, but it came after the fact. It came after all of the drunkenness with the bad wine, okay? Because now the good wine is here. And I want to just real quick read, this is just one of many, many, many verses about the wrath of Yahweh being compared to wine. It is, a, and even talked about as a bitter drink, a bitter drink. Uh, taste for those who drink of it. In Psalm 60, it says, God, you have rejected us. You have broken us down. You have been angry. Restore us again. You have made the land tremble. You have torn it. Mend its fractures, for it quakes. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine that makes us stagger. Okay? Do you see the comparison between wines here? This is deep. This is deep. And I I can't explain every nuance of it, but I saw something today when I was studying and I was like, I've got, this has to be shared. This has to be shared. Um, Yahweh did not want the man to become like him. 
Yet the Father that Christ speaks of grants us son and daughtership with him. Ultimate freedom, ultimate love, ultimate eternal life, returning to the divine fractal, the mind of God, the massive pattern that we're a part of, the frequency of love. Why would God not want that in the garden? Because the God in the garden was not the God that created. He was the God that made. You can go watch my Yalda Bayoth video if you're confused on this. Don't worry, you're not alone. I try to reveal this message lovingly. I don't want to like preach it and shout it from the rooftops. But like when you start to see it, it can be disturbing because it takes a lot to just go, okay, I've been I've been duped. How do I recover from this? Because there is like a recovery process. For me it was it's taken almost the better part of a year to kind of get get over that so uh, I know what a fractal is what do you mean by the divine fractal okay so the divine fractal being present in everything uh, you know it talks about the logos of God in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God all things were created and nothing was created that was not created through the word of God talking about Christ right well we turn that into like well it's the Bible the Bible is the word of God I, I have one somewhere oh it's back there um you know, that the Bible is the word of God. The The Bible being the word of God is something that really came around, especially within like the King James uh, Bible being released. You know, people didn't like him. He put his name on it, called it the word of God. Now we've got the word of God. Just to simplify that whole thing. There it is. The word of God in the New Testament is the logos, the divine computation or expression of God. That is inherently a fractal quality it is everything is the same pattern everything is god god is in everything the love of the divine father and the divine mother the divine masculine the divine feminine again you go to the garden why why all of a sudden is the feminine voice the reason for this fall ask yourself that guys ladies please please i love you i love the divine feminine the sophia if you look into Gnosticism, the Sophia, the wisdom, the wisdom is in the moon. We have these archetypes attached to everything. And there's divine feminine in all of us. When we when we unite, that's why it talks about taking in marriage the man and the woman. And this is not political, by the way. I don't care who you're married to. I love you, by the way. I have um, the freedom flag, the L LGBTQ flag on my profile because I have probably half of my friend list. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, the spiritual quality of uniting the divine feminine and the divine masculine, which is in each one of us, by the way. That's why that marriage union w is so focused on within biblical context um, because, well, what about the person that doesn't ever get married? So can they not find God? Like, no, this is esoteric. Like, this is your divine feminine, your divine masculine. Cause in the beginning we were both, it was one being, one being, not a being, a being. Um, sorry, I'm from West Texas. So, so with that said, that combination, the mixing of them becomes the logos fully present in the Christ, by the way, uh, I see it in Krishna. I see it in Buddha. Christ is my guru. He's the one that I follow. He's the one that I understand the teachings of more. I've grown up with him. Um, the Gnostic Gospels unlocked me completely, especially Gospel of Thomas. But asking about the fractal, I want to read this, and this will help define the divine fractal or the mind of God, uh, which you see the fingerprints of. You look at just a sunflower, you see the fingerprints of. Even though we're in a matrix or a hologram or a holos, um, you still see the computing power of God in all of it. Even though it may have been manipulated or conformed or made into something that masks the true reality by the maker God, Yahweh, or the demiurge in Gnosticism, or Yaldabaoth, as I've talked about, you still see like truth always breaks through. It's within light, it's within uh, vibrations, it's within the very fingerprints and the fractal nature, the maths that we have on this planet. And so I love this quote from Krishna here in the Bhagavad Gita. It's Bhagavad Gita chapter 6, verse 30 through 31. It says, I am ever present. 
to those who have realized me in every creature, seen all life as my manifestation. They are never separated from me. They worship me in the hearts of all, and all their actions proceed from me. Wherever they may live, they abide in me. So think about that for a second in terms of that fractal nature. You know, you zoom in as close as you can. It's the same as if, if you zoom out as far as you can. There's no difference between you and me. I am you and you are me. We are different pieces of God experiencing different elements of reality, being trapped in a physical matrix, but I prefer to view it as we are in a holographic playground that we can now begin to recreate, remanifest the very kingdom of God within each of us. Jesus was a mystic, guys. Um, he's not a figure that we need to turn into some... Uh, geopolitical division we are missing the point uh, by just trying to make him historic or just trying to make him messiah we're missing the point he was a very mystical he spoke of the nature of reality and self he um, spoke uh, in stark contrast to all the old systems and mythologies and revealed a much simpler much more divine way of existing and finding God. Yes, thank you for your kindness and service. Thank you very much, Kate, uh, Kate Ladd. Uh, Katie Ladd. Katie Ladd, like that. Uh, Dragon720 says, thank you. I appreciate your knowledge. Thank you very much. Uh, Truth23 uh, says, female superiority will be the main part of the final fall of man. Uh, started that way, will end that way. Um, why do you believe that, Truth? 23. I, I think that's kind of opposite of what I'm talking about. Maybe I misunderstand you, but I think it's actually the the rebirthing is that final understanding that divine feminine is is just as much a part of our reality as divine masculine. And you've got centuries and centuries and centuries of the patriarchy of the Roman push to canonize and create a doctrine and dogmatic system of, uh, again, the, the, the masculine, the male dominance within that is un, unbelievable. And that, co that goes back to the Old Testament. That, that goes back to what I'm talking about. That is not the father that Jesus is speaking of. That father bears the logos by having a feminine consort or side to him to it and that's what christ was speaking of and we've we've twisted it and we've added stuff to it literally i'm going to show you guys when we get done with john here how john 21 was added um we're going to look at all of the twistings in the the pauline epistles and realize that it's just a lot simpler than that guys because jesus spoke stuff that's directly out of this the ancient vedic texts it's a simple universal truth of being here right now, quieting ourselves, finding God right now within us, and allowing that to actually manifest through our true self. And it, it's a hard message to receive. That's why I read this esoteric side of the gospel. I think for today, because I've been on almost an hour now, I think I'm going to pick up next week with the second half of John chapter two, um, because they go to Capernaum here and this is where he goes and cleanses the temple. And that's a whole nother lesson in and of itself. He absolutely, absolutely despised animal sacrifice. And you see where he is actually setting the animals free. The sacrifices are going free because they don't need them. Um, you know, <laughs> In Gospel of Mary Magdalene, she, you know, she asks about sin and he tells her that sin does not exist. It exists because you agree to it. That law which you created has bound you to sin. You are sinful, therefore uh, you've agreed to it and you've said that I am. Rather, you are divine. And I say we focus more of that. Like quit, crying, quit trying to make God more human and let's make ourselves more divine. And I'm not talking about ego elevation here, guys. And I'm not talking about like we've all made mistakes. We've all hurt ourselves and others. We've all uh, have emotional baggage, whatever. Uh, and that's all caused by sin, right? Well, the new wine is here, guys.
that fresh wine, the, the good wine that Christ brought into the world, into the party. Here we are. Let's, let's drink of that, I say. Um, not literally, but spiritually. It's time to uh, stop trying to justify the old wine. Let that live in that wineskin. And let's put the new wine in the new wineskin, just as he spoke of. So, um, yes, absolutely. Um, Lynn says, I think Yahweh divided us, not the creator God. Yes, I completely agree with that. That's not even weird or new, by the way. I mean, it's considered heretical. You don't hear about that in most churches, but I can almost guarantee you that most pastors have been trained to deal with this type of doctrine they understand uh what if the wine is the uh the blood of christ absolutely you know and that's definitely an interpretation of this um being there again i was trying to steer away from that today just because it's that's been talked about so much uh, i'm not refuting that i just there's another deeper level of this like what does it mean that like you know you had like paradise in the beginning and then the wrath was poured out and then here's Jesus saying, okay, people have been drunk on that wrath for, for long enough now. And, um, here's the good stuff. Here's the good stuff. So, uh, so the point was to divide us, uh, politics, gender made us fight versus unity and our strength to will and heal. Yes. Yes. Shocker flower. Amen. Uh, very, very good interpretation there in my opinion. Um, you know, with that said, I try to stay away from the conspiratorial thing. I did a whole episode yesterday on 22 signs that you are awakening. One of my warnings in that was when you seek, you will find, when you find you are disturbed upon being disturbed, you will marvel and then you will reign over all that is from Logion to of the gospel of Thomas. I haven't memorized. I've read it over and over and over. Um, So when you get disturbed, when you're like, oh my gosh, this is wild. Like I see it now. I'm starting to see it. Like, how is this possible that I haven't understood this for so long? Like it's, it's easy to go there and go, people have deceived me. And it's, it's this institution or that. And I just, I don't want to be that brand guys. I don't want to be that channel. It's not, it's not healthy. Okay. That us versus them. You're going to be disturbed when you start seeing this and you pray for it and you you look into it and you're like, that goes against everything I thought I knew. Everything. Just like in the movie The Matrix. Like, I'm waking up. This is really uncomfortable. I have to let go of things that I thought were comforting. Um, you know, all these people that I love, they're going and they're getting the same doctrine programmed into them all the time. And, like, I see a different side of it. I want to go evangelize them. They don't understand. Now I'm disturbed. Now I feel like I'm on an island. That's exactly how it's built. It's exactly how it's built. You have the God of this world, which Jesus told them. He said, your father is Satan. If your father were my father, then you would do the work or the will of my father. But you do the work or the will of your father, who is Satan. Well, who who was he talking to? He was talking to people that were literally serving, trying to appease this God of the Old Testament. And so he's bringing a new father to them. Uh, the battle for good and evil. Absolutely, Annie. Um, and it's not a battle of, of flesh and blood. It's a battle of spirit and of will. Um, and consciousness, guys. It's a consciousness. Um, and we don't, we don't do it by wielding swords or anything like that. We do it by going out and loving others, serving others. And when people want to argue about our doctrine and we show them that we are the Christ... We are the Christ because he's in us and we are in him and they can see him in our face. They see him in our words. They see him in our hearts. Oh, you're perfect cub. No, I'm telling you guys, I'm not perfect. Trust me, but I'm telling you, I I know the one who is and I can manifest him on this, on this planet right now. I don't have to wait for some second coming on a cloud. We'll get into that whole mess later. The kingdom of God does not come with observable signs. If those tell you, look, it is in the sky, the birds are closer than you. If they say, look, it is in the ocean, the fish are closer than you. Truly, I tell you, the kingdom of God is within you. That's from the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas. By the way, a mirror image of the canonical gospel where he says, 
The kingdom of God does not come with observable signs, yet the kingdom of God is within you. No, 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 you don't understand, Cub. My Bible says that the kingdom of God is among you. It was, he was talking about himself. No. Read the Greek. Read the original. Real talk, Ed says. Yes, absolutely, my friend. Uh, Matt Green th uh, says, great job today. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you guys. Things have been trimmed, edited, tweaked. Just enough. Just enough to confuse. What does the God of the, this world do? Confusion, wrath, judgment, division, pain. Look at the Tower of Babel. They were understanding the esoteric mysteries again of the heavens, the earth, the nature of God, the nature of self. And Yahweh Elohim destroyed that tower and he scattered them among the earth and he took Israel as his portion at that moment. Mind-blowing. What? That's blasphemy. Or is it? I can't tell you what's blasphemy, but I'm giving you the message and you can go look into it. You start to read things from this angle, guys, and it, it's it's life-changing. And I've had m plenty of people speak out against me, friends, family members, that I am a stumbling block leading people astray. And that's fine. We all need to stumble. Because every time I stumble and get back up, I'm stronger. I'm more focused. I have more peace and unity. And sometimes we got to make ourselves stumble by going, you know what? I'm willing to stumble over all these ideas that I had, clear limiting beliefs, and step into something new. Um, even demons know scripture. Is Jesus the Messiah? Who do you say he is? Truth 23. Who do you say he is? Um, Jody says, so is Jesus the Messiah? Who do you say he is, Jody? I'm going to literally use the words that he said. Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Because as we're going to see, he never he never laid a whole lot of claims to those territories, but rather asked people what they thought. Who do you say I am? He had more in common with a mystical guru leader than he did with this Messiah they were looking for. Now, I'm not here to tell you who he is to you. Let him be who, who to you who he is. For me, he, he was God. But so am I, and so are you. Wait a minute. That's a bold claim. That's, that's, is it? Or did he come to show us that? We're sons and daughters of the Most High God. So true, the heart is the same as God. Uh, when my mom was pregnant with me, uh, I wasn't there. It was just the heart. And Yeah, absolutely. Very good. And sorry, I can't expand comments for some weird reason on Facebook. When I hit see more, it does nothing. So I can't see the rest of your comment. But I see where you're going with that. Absolutely. Like, reincarnation is definitely something that Christ alluded to. In the canonical Gospels, yes, but even more so in the Gnostic Gospels. I mean, here's the deal, guys. Truth is light. Truth is frequencies. Truth is love. And when you step into that, the fog clears. Most of the times when people want to argue this doctrine back and forth with me and they defend something that they know to be true... It's not because it's necessarily true. They're defending it because it's threatening to them that they might have to dig deeper. They might have to accept wider. Um, and I mean that in love, by the way. A lot of it has to do with trauma, too, on like needing something concrete to hold on to when everything I talk about is anything but concrete. It is definitely fractal. It is definitely abstract. It is definitely esoteric. So... Jesus is the grandson of Cleopatra. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, that's the same, it's the same story, um, as the Egyptian stories. Uh, there's even evidence to suggest that Jesus was literally adopted by his mother, Mary, rather than the, uh, immaculate conception, which has definitely been something that certain institutions have hung their hat on for thousands of years. Um, 
I don't care if he was immaculate conception or natural conception. Was he God? Did he realize the fullness of God in him? Absolutely. Was he martyred for it? Absolutely. Can I take the same path, the same narrow way as he did? Absolutely. That's why I'm a hopeless Gnostic, though. I don't think by reading some book that I'm going to attain heaven, but I think that I might attain enlightenment by continuing to deeply seek, to deeply knock at the door and find that authentic reality, which is nothing but love and light. So, uh, PKD says you're here for a reason. Uh, Truth 23. Um, yeah, absolutely. Annie Truth 23. Do you believe he is in you? Um, oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, I was waiting on it to reveal itself. Nope. I am not God. Neither are you. Um, you know, it's all in interpretation. Truth 23. Um, and I understand where you're at. I, I love you. I love you. Uh, I believe, yes, sister, I love you. Um, don't write off my message yet. Come back here. You're, you're loved and you're welcome in this community. I promise you. Um, this is not, well, this is, this is definitely a her heretical doctrine that I teach, but this is such a freeing place to be like, it's amazing. Um, it is amazing. So you guys love it. And you'll find this community is incredible. Truth 23. Um, we are just, just some, some people that have all the same baggage here, all the same baggage, all the same struggles, all the same traumas. Our story is the same, no matter which person you talk to in here, uh, the angle and experience of it may be different, but the story is the same. Uh, we're all recovering from something. Uh, we all have the same end goal. Annie says, absolutely. Uh, we are looking for the fruit of the kingdom. And that kingdom doesn't go by any type of religious name. It just is. It's just the kingdom. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely, Hippie Mike. Love your name, by the way. Um, Magi are the kingmakers. Yes. Oh, and guys, December, by the way, right around the corner. We're studying Magi or the Magos. Um it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. And you're going to find your own unique powers through this, uh, which are spiritual gifts, by the way, from the Father, through you. Jesus said, you'll do greater things than even I have done. Uh, that was a promise. That was, he was bringing this message to us, guys. And we've forgotten it. We've forgotten it because we've, we've, we've tried to create a set of doctrines and beliefs that if I don't, if I don't claim this one thing and know this to be truth, Rather than, hey, I don't know. I know God's in me, and I'm going to let him guide me. I know that I'm one with him, and he is one with me. And I know that anything but that just leads me to sin and death. Uh, have you ever read Phillips Ross, Cleopatra to Christ? Excellent series. No, I have not. Thank you for that. Very, very good. Um, I have read, uh, yeah, I've got a lot, of, a lot of cool books. A lot of cool books I've read. I, in fact, I'm going to read one more from... The Bhagavad Gita right now. This is, um, I had these bookmarked. This is beautiful, guys, because I want to talk about empathy here for a second. Like, this is Christ in action here. This is Christ in you in action here. And this is going to be where I end it. And this is what uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, verse 32. When a person responds to the joys and sorrows of others as if they were his own, he has attained the highest state of spiritual union. That's the law of love right there. That is what Christ practiced. That's why I can keep showing up twice a day and doing what I'm doing within this community because I see you. I feel you. I know exactly where you're coming from. I know your past. I know your present and I know your future. I know who you are because I am you. I've been through the same things with a different storyline. We're all healing from something. We're all recovering. We all have trauma and God is light and he's in us. And it's our job to just stop, find peace, find unity, wake up and remember who we were when we were a child. Yes, my brother. Absolutely. Uh, every character in the Bible, he explains. Awesome. Awesome. I will definitely read that. Yeah, I got you, Annie. I knew what you were saying. 
So empathy, guys, like love each other. I will show up here every day and we're going to read from all kinds of ancient spiritual texts, but the message is all the same. It's how I know my story is your story. It's how I know my sins are your sins. But how do we transcend that? We step into this. We step into that unity of knowing that God is in everything. All life is his manifestation. We are not just worshiping in ourselves, but through the hearts of all. And all of our actions can proceed from God if we step into that place, in that vibration of love. Wherever they may live, they abide in me, he says. And we're responding to joys and sorrows, by the way, of others as if they are our own. That is the highest state of spiritual union. Beautiful, beautiful words. Get the Bhagavad Gita if you have not yet. This translation, it is on my website, cubcooker.com, under the spiritual book tab, spiritual texts. Highly recommend it. The translation is by Eknath Aswarn. I'm sure I butchered that, but um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, and the explanation leading up to the words of the Bhagavad Gita are amazing. And you're going to see so much Jesus in that. It'll blow your mind, guys. It'll blow your mind. Um, let's see. Um, yes, Tony, I take prayer requests. Uh, please, please. You're welcome, Tony. If you want to share it privately, you're welcome to message me. If you want to share it publicly, I can read it on here. But just know this is public. Thousands of people will see this literally like we have 10,000 plus views a week on these videos. So, But if you want it private, you can message me. Um, or really anybody in this community I know will pray for you. Um, so please just reach out. Um, but drop it here. I'll give you just a couple of minutes as I wrapped up, wrap up. If you want us to uh, bring that to the class, so to speak, then I will read it here. You can also drop it in the Facebook group. There's a free Facebook group on my website. Um, just go over there, and that's the podcast discussion. So if you want to do it in more of an intimate setting, that's a little bit tighter, intimate setting there. So knowledge is power. So love keeping an open mind and hearing new things. Awesome. Doug, thank you for being here. Um, yes, Annie, thank you. Thank you for taking care of people here. I appreciate that. Uh, prayer for my brother-in-law diagnosed with cancer stage four. Tony, my friend, um, we are going to pray for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, sending you love prayers, high vibration, and honestly healing. Honestly. In the name of the Father, just just be with you, brother. Um, join the free Facebook group. Keep the conversation going. Keep us updated on that, by the way. Um, like, don't, don't let this be the last conversation with this. Drop a comment in that Facebook group today, and let's keep the prayer going. We've got a ton of people in there that will pray for you, uh, myself included. So please get in there. We're here for you, and uh, we're going to pray, and we're going to watch what God does. So uh, prayer for my sister and her family. They are homeless and always sick. Oh, my gosh. Uh, ink and sweet, uh, sweets. Pray for you, too. Again, Facebook group. It's called Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast Discussion Group. It's a long name, hard to find, uh, but you can grab it on my website, cubcooker.com. Uh, anytime I'm live on any of these platforms, it's just over in my about or info or bio section. And it'll it's either the cubcooker.com, cubcooker.me, or stand.store slash at cubcooker, I think is the other URL. So if you're on my official page, that'll take you to the website. Um, and it's simply laid out. It's not a massive website. It's a very much a, like a creator website. So, um, but it just says free Facebook discussion group. Click on that. Both of you guys go over there, um, and keep that conversation going. We will pray for you. Like that's why that discussion group is there. It's to do like the business of the podcast. So anyway, thank you guys. Um, if you do want to support me nine bucks a month, everyday price, uh, why should you do it today? Because I need the support and it's a deeper community over there. The videos we're doing over in that group are uh, very to the point. 
it's not for entertainment value. It's for doing the spiritual work over there. Um, and the mythos group stands for mind yielding the hope of spirit. I've simplified that acronym. It was something else, but that acronym is very poignant for me. That is the work I'm doing. I'm helping your mind yield the hope of the spirit. Um, and that is the whole point. So how do I give that $9 a month? Tony, you don't have to do that for prayer, my brother. That's not what I'm about. But if you just love what I'm doing and you want to, it's kind of like a Patreon thing that's on the website too. It's called the Mythos Membership. Um, and I've got a bunch of spiritual training videos there. I've got uh, a, another private Facebook community that's just for people that join that uh, where we get to talk every day in that group. So Tony, you want to support. Thank you, my brother. Uh, I appreciate that. And I will never, I'm, I do not charge for prayer or nothing like that, guys. That's literally just people that want to go above and beyond support what I'm doing. I have some extra value in there for you guys. That's really, really cool. So, uh, but thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. Cubcooker.com will take you right over there. You can't miss it. It's called Mythos, uh, Mythos membership. It's at the very top there. So, which stands for mind yielding the hope of spirit. So um love you guys shalom rec thank you for being here anything on facebook here i've missed thank you and god bless you temple says benjamin Wright. thank you for being here my friend um let's see da, 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 da. other comments per concerns uh podcast name is the cub cooker supernatural podcast uh, if you look for cub cooker you'll see um the long name cub cooker supernatural podcast uh, you can Apple, Spotify, anywhere you want to find it. YouTube also. Um, I'm not currently multi-streaming on YouTube, but I will soon. As soon as we hit the threshold to do, like I can live stream on YouTube now, but there's some other things like with the live gifts and just how they push it out to more people once you hit a certain threshold of followers. And I just got um, one threshold met. And then as soon as I hit the next, um, we'll be able to, to multi-stream to that too, which means I'm going to have to buy another iPad. So, um, or phone or something. I don't know. I'm going to end up with devices everywhere. Um, and I like doing it this way cause I can focus on each platform. It's not all mixed into some software. Those softwares don't really push it out with the algorithm anyway. So this is a much better, more intimate way to do it. Uh, and you guys on Facebook, if you want to hear like the, the good audio version of this with this microphone, that's actually going to go to the YouTube channel and the podcast later today. So you can catch this. Yes. The blink in the, in the lio. Yeah, exactly. You can't say that on here. I don't know why they, why do you give me a link in the bio TikTok and Facebook and everybody if I can't say it. Um, so anyway, you know where it is guys, you can go click the link. Um, it'll take you there. That's the hub for everything. So uh, so books not included in the typical Bible were omitted. Uh, they're relevant. Or are they important? They are absolutely important, Doug. Uh, we're doing the Enoch study during the week. Um, that's more of a mythological study just for purposes of, you know, it doesn't tie an exact timeline together, but it's definitely like a mind expanding book. And I'm all about expanding consciousness. The ones that I really recommend, those are on my website too, in my reading list. Um, and I've got, I think eight books in there now it includes the Dhammapada, the Bhagavad Gita, the Tibetan book of the dead. Um, then it has gospel of Thomas, gospel of Mary Magdalene, gospel of Philip and gospel of Judas. All of those books, I personally believe in addition to the Bible are vital for the spiritually enlightened person to read, understand and internalize and then alchemize in their life. That's the work we're doing here, guys. Um, I talk about faith, spirituality, and paranormal all the time, but um, and, and mythologies. But the work I'm doing, again, I'm a mystic, I'm a light worker, and I'm a mentor. And I want to help you take all of this stuff and alchemize it in a way. What does that mean? What does it mean to alchemize? It's where you're taking all of those substances and it becomes something tangible in your life. Not a doctrine, not a dogma, not this is my process. It just is. And you get it. Like you just see it and you feel it and you know it. And it's not something you even care to defend because you know that nobody's going to get there by you evangelizing them. They have to find it because they're ascending to that level. They might see it in you. That's the best way 
to share it. If you look at Christ, he spoke in parables. The disciples said, why do you speak in parables? He said, so those with ears to hear and eyes to see, uh, they who have ears will hear but not hear, and those who have eyes will see but not know. Like, he's literally saying, like, I'm just going to share the message because it's my responsibility and my privilege to do that. But if they don't see it and they don't hear it, I can't make them. Like, you can lead a horse to water, right? Um, okay, uh, Jody, I can't find purpose anymore after losing my adult child uh, and mother in three days. Oh, my gosh. Jody, Jody, Jody. Please, Jody. I'm telling you, join the free Facebook group, not so I can capture you in a group. It's completely free. It's for the podcast discussion on my website. I want to pray for you too, my friend. Um, that's what we're doing over there in the free group. So like, that is like, you know, that's all about the discussion and community around this prayer requests and everything. So Jody, we are praying for you today, sending love and high vibration. And I mean that, I mean that in the most Christ-like way, like, all of our energy pouring on you right now like that's our job here okay and and i just pray for your healing and your ascension out of this because what a what a test to go through oh my gosh um annie says seriously watch the chosen it's so good matthew is so relatable to me all right annie you've convinced me i'm gonna go watch it I, it's on netflix right now i'm gonna go watch it so i just got netflix again uh, great. I will dig into them. Glad I came across this. Uh, God is always on time. Absolutely, Doug. Absolutely. Jody, you are so welcome and you are so loved here. Thank you for being here. Uh, same goes for you. If you need anything, I am here. Yes. Annie is amazing. Reach out to Annie ladies. She is amazing. Um, Lynn, thank you. Jody, thank you. Love and light. All of you guys. Thank you guys over here. Drew, uh, and it says an insane test for sure. Yes, absolutely. Thank you guys on Facebook as well. I need to get another big iPad so I can read Facebook comments here. Uh, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Awesome. Okay. Just making sure there were no more prayer requests. I love you all. Thank you for being here. Happy Sunday. Enjoy it. Um, go, go get in the sunlight. Meditate on gratitude. No matter what's going on in your life right now, we're, uh, everybody's struggling with something. Some of them, obviously, deep emotional pain today, deep, deep sense of loss. And sometimes just bathing in the sunlight and being grateful that you can even feel that sunlight. It's like the only thing we can do. And my heart goes out to you guys today. Really. So sending you that love and energy. Have a good rest of your week. You too, Drew. Love you guys. Uh, hit me up in the Facebook group. You guys that want to support, thank you for the support. Thank you for being here today. This is the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast, episode 101. We are at 101, guys. Thank you. Thank you for helping me do this. Thank you, uh, thank you, Father, that, that we get to do this. This is amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow, Monday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time and 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday, and then Sundays at 11 Central Standard Time. Love you guys. Have a beautiful day. Peace.